If you're not watching Oceano Co, all I can say is what are you doing? Get going and watch this hour and a half long episode one, which is just the prologue, mind you. Now, the first twist of this show I saw coming, and many people probably will, given that it's in the synopsis, but let me just say, by the end of this very long movie-length first episode, it ends in such a way that I can't remember the last time I walk out of the first episode Yes, it helps that it's basically four episodes in one, but I say everything that I just experienced was good enough for an anime, but the way you just transitioned makes me say I have no goddamn idea where we go from here, but yeah, you should watch this one. Idol Stalkers, Murder, Reincarnation, all in the synopsis, but let me tell you, the wholesomeness that was a majority of this episode really was a fascinating time watching too of the biggest idol fans reincarnate as their favorite idols kids there's a lot to enjoy but man is there a lot of twists and turns full live reaction to this entire episode available on my patreon it was such a fun episode with darkness but it still catches you off guard by the end. Now, like I said, the synopsis literally does give it away that there is a stalker that is targeting an idol, someone gets killed and gets reborn as her kid. So like that is in the synopsis, so I was expecting that. Honestly, I wasn't sure if the doctor was gonna be the stalker or not because you never quite know with these shows, but by the reincarnation angle, the reborn as the infant, I was like, okay, I'm interested to see. And then it turns out he has a sibling because there are twins and very quickly, they don't lead you along. They say, hey, this girl that this doctor was taking care of, who was her biggest fan, turns out is actually the sister. They just don't know it yet. And over the course of this episode, you really get accustomed to this family story. There's so many plot threads that would lead to an interesting story arc. Idols in Japan are treated as like the most manufactured things ever. They can't have boyfriends. They couldn't have girlfriends. They can't be in a relationship because it would ruin the public image that these, basically these parasocial creatures think that they have a shot at maybe someday being with them. It's a entirely manufactured product. And I love how when it comes to the whole, okay, she was 16 and she had twins. Okay, it's a secret. If that got exposed, her career would be over. So in return, one of her manager and his wife, ultimately, basically the wife ends up becoming the, the so-called mother in terms of public perception. And by the end of the episode, well, definitely becomes the new mother. And we'll get to that in a minute. But I like how there's so many options because you have the concept of, okay, when Ruby, who is the girl, grows up, very much she could look identical to her mother. Is she going to be an idol herself? I mean, over the course of the episode, they kind of build you into that thought process. When it comes to Aqua Marine, or Aqua as he's normally called, basically he has the talent of an up-and-coming actor. And, by, and based on closer to the end of the episode, it definitely feels like, granted, because he goes with the director and says, hey, can you raise me? Most likely saying, can you please raise me to be a good actor sort of a thing. I'm, I was just like, man, there's so many ways that this could ruin all three of their careers someday if the secret was exposed. And the beginning of the show starts off with somehow a stalker finding the location of an idol who was going by so many different things that would avoid public ever finding out. And by the end of it, it ends with her murder, and the only person who would be able to give that information to a psychotic bastard like that would be the biological father who she contacted a day or so earlier giving her new address. And I gotta admit, the stab came as a surprise. It really, really did. Because I think what this episode did was it made you worried about her career. Or it made you worried about her secret being exposed and what it could do to these characters. The stalker being there was something that you expect to pop back up. But just the way they just, because she called, I was like, oh, it's going to be the father. That's who it's going to be. And then you just see the stalker with this bouquet of flowers and then the stab. I was in denial the whole time. I was like, no, she won't die because there's no way. Like, where do you go with a story like this? if she dies here. The whole point is the family dynamic, clearly. And every moment, every step of the way throughout that conversation, I was like, no, nah, they ain't gonna do me like this. They ain't playing like this. And then they did it. But the fact that she finally says I love you to them after feeling like she doesn't know how to love because she was raised in such a shitty situation. Mom was a thief, went to jail, threw her in a, a care home and never came back for her even after being released from prison. The fact that her whole idea was lying with this facade of getting these fake connections and someday hoping that the fake thing would become real. The fact that in her dying moment she realized she had that and she just wished she could see them grow up. Prior to this, right, they literally bring up the fact that she's horrible with names and faces. And the fact that she actually was able to pull that out and probably save her kid's life because of that, because this 
parasocial incel creep basically was like how dare you not love me you you say that you know this is all just fake you say it to all your fans and then you lead us on if you can't realize it was fake to begin with i mean that's a him issue but the fact that she pulled out th from basically thin air i thought but the fact that he was such like a devoted fan she recognized his face and name and that's the only reason he ran off and then ultimately killed himself which good riddance i say it's such a trip man and it's such a good prologue and that's really what it is right because you get accustomed to the doctor you get accustomed to the girl that he was basically taken care of before her very far too early death and then you get a connection with i this idol and you get to really understand her as a person and you're really growing accustomed to her as a mother yeah, she makes mistakes, but man, like, it was just so interesting seeing the possibility of them growing up, and we did get a couple of time skips throughout. I was like, I'm really interested to see where the idol career will go, and ultimately where potentially the daughter's idol career might go, where an actor career might go, and by the end of the episode, you leave with a revenge tale where, no, Aqua wants to kill this man. Aqua wants to kill his biological father, and I believe he'll do it. I mean, the fact that we are now at their teenage years, seemingly they're the exact same age as when I had them. So she was 16 when she had her kids, and seemingly they're probably about 16 now. And as normal as they may appear, I mean, I am interested to see the direction they'll go. They definitely pulled a fun twist with their new so-called mother, who was kind of like an aunt in the situation up until her death. Originally, she was just so just done with all their BS, like, why should I be taking care of some idol's kids? Like, I'm going to expose them for money, and then they start talking and basically make it sound like she's, like, chosen by God, and they're chosen by God. If she sticks with them, then ultimately she'll be rewarded with an actor husband someday or something. And I love the fact that basically by the end of this episode, what started as such a fake, almost isekai narrative of, like, you're chosen, this is all this, that, and the third, it ends with the comforting of, like, I know I'm not your real mother, I know I can never replace but I look at you as my kids and it just that was the only band-aid that kept us from bleeding out in that moment because what a shocking end it was actually a very well-produced episode there was these moments that were absolutely jaw-droppingly gorgeous but for the most part they had a simplistic charm that kept you interested this entire episode and the VAs the music I mean there's this moment where like everyone's talking shit about the idols and as soon as they kickstart it just like blows everyone's pants off and they're like okay now I see what everyone sees in her I love it. Idols are absolutely manufactured for the most part, and they are treated as objects for the general public. And as much as, you know, it's cute seeing the babies go crazy with their glow sticks, I mean, so many think they actually have a shot with these idols because it's manufactured to give people like that the thought that if someday if they pay for the merchandise, they pay for the meet and greet, they too can have it. And it's no wonder some people end up becoming as toxic as the stalker who ended up killing her. But man, this episode was so much more than just the shocking deaths, which there was three of them. Ultimately, the thing that really kept us is it built a family connection that you wanted to support. It was different. The sibling relationship was intriguing and cute and a little cringy at times, but I loved everything about it. And the fact that you let us bond with them, can, like it's not like they broke this up into four episodes. They let us for an hour and a half really grow accustomed to what this wanted to do. Basically an hour with this family dynamic and then the fact that you ruin it like that, you felt as devastated as they did, and that's what made it an effective 10 out of 10 first episode. This will, without a doubt, be one of the stars of this anime season. It may only be listed for 11 episodes, but all things considered, it's 14 episodes when you take into consideration how long this first episode was. Thoughts and feelings yourself down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell, of course, so you can get notified when I upload on the channel, and like I mentioned, full live reaction is available on the Patreon. And while you're there, you can also get a video shoutout. So today, we have username, MK, Bryce Dezangles, and Fluid Druid. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.